Okay, so we have a brand new, well, not poll just yet, but there's a new dev blog out, um, which we're going to try and read through. I'm not going to read through it all, obviously. It is a very, very long dev blog. Um, there is one thing to note just before, um, that this is only the proposed stats for everything. This is only what Jagex would recommend. With feedback from the community, everything can be changed to become balanced, okay? So consider the updates and how they can fit into the game and actually be a good part of the game without just saying no. Also, before I start, I will leave timestamps of um, each uh, update or proposed update uh, in the description. So if you are only here for a particular part of it, um, then have a look down in the description and click on uh, said timestamps. So the first one is the Chaos Temple, um, or the Chaos Altar even, that is in 38 Wilderness, um, that is just west of the Lava Maze, where people can use a telegrab um, to get Zamrak Wines. So what they're proposing is that you can sacrifice any bones for 25% uh, bonus um, and 35% uh, bonus if the diaries are done. For me, I think that's a little bit too high. So currently, when you use the Gilded Altar uh, with Dragon Bones, uh, you can expect to get roughly 270k XP per hour in prayer. If you were to then use this temple, um, you would gain uh, roughly 337k. They're saying that you would roughly get around 364k with the Elite Wilderness Diaries complete. However, there is a little bit of a catch. Obviously, it is in Deep Wild. Um, so it will be a hot spot for PKers. Um, when they made the Telegraph and the Wines thing, um, the actual temple itself was very active for around two to three days, even up to a week afterwards. There was no one there before, and it was a very big hot spot for PKers. Um, and it pretty much, well, call it Woody Rejuvenation, but it pretty much did that. So obviously, um, you are unable to unnote the bones at an NPC at a cost. It said it's around 50 GP per bone to unnote. Obviously, there is a little bit of a catch. Um, if you have a full unit of bones, obviously you're not gonna be having any food or any pots or uh, any way of surviving. Um, bearing in mind that you probably wanna survive because you don't wanna be risking your full set of bones. You're only, gonna, you're only gonna be getting around half of that XP uh, per hour. So to me, it sounds like it's reasonably balanced. Maybe let me know what you think uh, in the comments. So they expect it to be around 40 trips per hour. Obviously that is if you are uninterrupted um, for a whole hour, which is very unlikely. So the question that they said is, should we add the ability for players to offer bones to the Chaos Altar found in 38 Wilderness as described in the devlog? Um, for additional XP when compared to Gilded Altars with two Lit Burners. There will also be an NPC that could unnote the bones for a fee. So, Major Area 2, this is offering a new best in slot magic cape, um, similar to that of the Fire Cape and the Inferno. So currently, the Saradomus Cape, or any Gilded Cape in game, is a plus 10 bonus to magic. Um, the one that they're offering is going to be plus 20, so the same uh, boost to that of an Inferno Cape. To acquire this cape, you'd have to kill three bosses in random locations around the world, and to find these bosses, um, you'd have to use a hot and cold device, uh, which would draw you closer to the boss. So once you defeat a boss, you'll get a drop called a Unique Heart, um, then you must defeat all three bosses, and then you take one of each heart to Collodion at the Mage Bank, and he will upgrade one God Cape for you. It does say that you'd have to be very careful when using the cape, because if you die with it or drop the cape, uh, the magic within will be sealed um, and the original book cape will be reclaimed. So it's not like the current capes where you can just go back and get another one. For every cape that you lose, you'd have to go and get another one by killing all three of the bosses and getting the hearts, giving them back to Clodion. So it is quite a process. Um, so you probably wouldn't see many PKs using it. So there's two questions proposed. The first one is, should we add uh, Major Arena 2 to the game as described in the dev blog? Players with 75 magic who have completed the Major Arena um, and unlocks the ability to cast all god spells outside the arena, we'll have to track down and defeat three brand new bosses found in random locations within the deep multi-combat wilderness. This is looking to be multi-combat here. Completing this would allow players to upgrade one god cape um, to the new best in slot magic cape, which would be lost on death. The, the second question is, if the major arena 2 is added to the game, should it be possible to obtain more than one god cape at any given time? This would allow players to have capes from all three gods. So, Rev Caves, the very big update, and um, I would absolutely love Rev Caves. I mean, the amount of videos uh, pre OC with Rev Caves, it was probably the most fun this time. If, if any of you have seen, like, framed MLBD, um, you know, sort of third age film, all, all them, like, pre EOC, classic Rev Cave videos they are brilliant. I'll probably link a few in the description. So the first thing that it said is they're looking to only introduce PvP 
armors at the moment. There's no current PvP weapons, this is only the armors, and it is not the corrupt armors, it's only the normal armors. Um, which require 78 defense. Uh, if you are a PK and you want the weapons and the corrupt armors, um, I'm sure that there will be maybe a poll eventually or you know some sort of compromise that we can come up with. So the proposed Revenant Caves um, will contain various Wildy Slayer NPCs and a new Ghostly NPC um, which will be a Revenant. So if anyone did, uh, doesn't understand that the Revenant Caves previously basically um, had a whole load of different revenants and um, the higher level um, the the revenant NPC the better the chance of getting a unique item um, it will be most combat throughout all of it so it will be a brand new PK spot um, which for me will be fantastic I mean I love Roque's priority and the proposed updates um, do look of that similar to what it was priority which will be great so if you are a PVMer and um, you are quite worried about getting attacked, it does say there's plenty of escape routes and high level shortcuts um, around the cave that you can use if you are a PVMer. Currently at the bottom of the blog it says that it's roughly, uh, you can expect roughly 2 mil GP per hour. Now, obviously that's if you are interrupted. That does seem quite high to me, maybe um, there can be a little bit of a change. But you have to consider that um, Zora is around 1.5 mil per hour and wyverns I don't really know but I'm assuming it's probably around 1 mil per hour that might be wrong but it is definitely an upgrade so just bear in mind that it won't be anywhere near 2 mil per hour because um, obviously you will be getting PK'd quite a lot. The main idea of this is for it to be a high risk high reward um, PUP and PVM area. It is also important to note that the GP per hour uh, must be high enough so PVM must go there um, but obviously it can't be too low so there's no PVMers. Um, and for it to be a PK hotspot, there has to be some incentive for people to go there or it will just be dead content in no time. So the proposed question is, should we add Revenant Caves to the game? As described in the dev blog, the caves will be multi-way combat located within the wilderness from levels 17 to 40. So this is taking up a lot of the wilderness. This is, you know, from the shallow caves all the way to the deep caves. Um, you know, 17 to 40 wild is a long, long way. So presumably all the good monsters will be around 40 wild um, right at the end of the cave um, so this isn't looking for quick trips you will, you will have to walk quite a long way uh, to get to the big monsters um, so it sounds like it's quite balanced to me there will be a variety of existing npcs to kill alongside new npcs aka the revenants um, all monsters within the cave will be part of the wilderness slayer monster list and there will be various high level shortcut and escape routes um, available to players. So obviously if you are a PVM, you're probably likely to have high agility. However, those PKs that are probably after you are unlikely to have um, set agility level. So it will be quite easy to escape presumably. So one of the rewards is the Revenant bracelet. So once wearing this bracelet, um, it will cause no Revenants to be able to attack you. Uh, there was actually something like this pre-EOC. So the poll question that is proposed is if the Revenant Caves are added to the game, should Revenant NPCs within the cave have a chance to drop the Revenant bracelet as described in the dev blog? If the question passes, Revenant NPCs will also drop Revenant Shards, which are a guaranteed drop used to charge the bracelet. An uncharged bracelet and Revenant Shards would be tradable. The next reward proposed is a teleport scroll. Uh, this um, pretty much does it says on the tin. Uh, Revenant NPCs are able to drop a tradable teleport scroll to get to and from the wilderness. But the proposed question is, if the Revenant Caves add to the game, should the Revenant NPCs within the cave have a chance of dropping a teleport scroll as described in the dev blog? This single use item would teleport players to the lower wilderness level uh, entrance of the Revenant Caves. The scrolls would be tradable and the drop rate would increase depending on the level of the Revenant killed. Now this next update is quite a interesting one. So the proposed update is an amulet of peril. This will increase your strength bonus when you are at low hit points. However, you must be in PvP combat. It also does say that you must have the amulet equipped. Um, so you will be losing bonuses from whatever amulet you're using. Um, and you must be in combat uh, with another player. It does say at the bottom that the uncharged amulet of peril will be similar to that of a amulet of power. And the charged one will be similar to that of an amulet of torture. However, when using the amulet, um, you must be in a fight for uh, a period of time. So there will be no rushing with the amulet. So the proposed question, if the Revenant Caves add to the game, should NPCs within the cave um, have the chance to drop a new tradable necklace? 
calls the amulet apparel as described in the dev blog. The amulet has the ability to increase your strength bonus based on how low your active hit points are whilst in PvP combat only. The drop rate of the amulet would increase dependent on the level of the revenant killed. So the Revenant Van Braces, it does say that it's uh, WIP, which is work in progress. So they're proposing that there is a new best in slot range gloves. Um, I'll put a picture of, on screen of the uh, Barrows gloves and the Dragonhide Vams and the proposed Revenant Vams. So you can get an idea of how the uh, sort of tiers work um, of different gloves that you can wear. So it does say that it requires 40 defense to wear. Um, so currently, obviously, you can't wear the Barrows gloves if you're below 40 defense. So it's basically similar to that. Um, you can't wear these overpowered gloves. Um, so it mainly be, will be for Zerkers and Mains. So the proposed question is, if the Revenant Caves are added into the game, should Revenant NPCs within the cave have a chance to drop a new set of tradable gloves uh, slash fan braces that will be best in slot for ranged as described in the dev blog. These would require 40 defense to wear and the drop rate would increase dependent on the level of the Revenant killed. Now this update is my personal favorite. I've been waiting for this for ages. Um, I actually tweeted about this like probably last year sometime, almost a year and a half ago. Um, and I've been wanting this update for ages. So the Luke Key Scroll is a new tradable item dropped um, by NPCs in the Revenant Caves. So pretty much if you're a PK, you will want one of these scrolls. So there'll be a very high demand for these scrolls, uh, which will probably, presumably, it will be quite a good drop um, for a PVM to sell uh, onto a PK. The ability of this loot key scroll is to toggle loot keys. So all the loot that you get from a kill in PvP worlds or the wilderness uh, will turn into a key similar to that of dead man mode. This gives the ability of a PK to go through multiple kills uh, without taking too much of their invent up. Um, for me, this sounds like an awesome, awesome idea. This update will probably also be removing looters as there will be no loot left on the floor um, in the wilderness. And also this would obviously cause for it to be less lag within the wilderness because um, there is a lot of um, bots running around or looter bots running around even. Um, that actually basically cause a lot of lag in the wilderness. So it does say that players can hold up to five keys um, at a time and they can redeem the keys at a bank. So for example, if you kill a player with five keys and you have say two keys, uh, you'll gain the three most valuable keys. So you can only have five keys at a maximum. But I agree with that you should only actually have five keys to be able to hold. But I think you should actually be able to bank these keys. Um, I just imagine like watching these loot videos of opening like a hundred keys or a thousand keys that would be so good i think that'd be awesome so the proposed question is if the revenant cave adds to the game should revenant npcs within the cave have a chance to drop a tradable loot key scroll as described in the dev blog the loot key scroll can be redeemed at crystalla um, who is the edge for witch um, and given players the ability to toggle loot keys for any pvp kills it is also important to note that um, if you are voting no for the revenant caves um, you shouldn't just vote no for everything. So that at the start of each question, it does say if Revenant goes out to the game. But however, if that, for, for example, if this poll passes um, and the Revenant caves actually don't, they'll probably most likely find another way of introducing um, these updates. So if you don't like Revenant caves, don't just sort of disregard everything. Um, have a look at all the questions um, and see what has a place in the game. So the last one is the PvP armors. Um, so if anyone remembers the Statius, the Vesta. Uh, the Morrigans and the Zurials. So Statius and Vesta were melee armors, um, which gave a uh, bonus to melee and also quite considerable defense bonus. The Morrigans was a considerable range bonus and the Zurials was a considerable uh, magic bonus. So I will put on screen um, the, so, so for example, the Vesta's chain body and the Statius plate body. I will compare this, for example, to a Bandos chest plate. Um, and likewise um, with the uh, Banos Tassets and the Plate Skirt and for example, I don't know, like a Berserker Helm or something and any range armour um, I will put on screen as well. Um, this may take a while to flash up and have a look at the bonuses proposed for each of the um, proposed updates and compare this to what there is in game. It's important to note that the PV armours require 78 defence to wear. Um, there is no corrupt armours for now, um, however, hopefully there will be some in the future. Each of the PvP armors disintegrate so they get destroyed after one hour of combat. So these presumably will be very, very high tier, expensive items that will disintegrate as soon as one hour has passed. 
So the proposed question is if the revenant carries it added to the game, should we also add PvP armors as described in the devlog? These armors will be tradable until they are used in combat. Once used, they will degrade and become untradable. After one hour of combat, they will disintegrate um, and they cannot be repaired, making them a very expensive item to use. So if you missed me saying earlier, uh, all these updates are only proposed updates, so they are subject to change and with the feedback from the community, hopefully it will become a valid addition to the game. So everyone should consider each one of the updates and how they can fit into the game just before saying no. So as I said earlier, if you are not very keen on the actual Revenant Caves, um, but you do want one of the other um, updates, I'm sure that you can find a way to introduce um, the said update into the game. Um, without actually voting for Revenant Caves. So don't just vote no just because you don't like Revenant Caves for another update. Consider each one of the updates and how they can be a valid addition to the game. So, I'm aware this is quite a long video. Um, Timestamps will be in the description of each of the updates that I've gone through. Um, and I'll also leave um, the link to the devlog in the description and a few videos um, from pre-EOC uh, Revenant Caves to have an example of what this was like. So, really hope you enjoyed watching, and um, I will see you in a few days for a new video. Um, I had to postpone the video for this week as I wanted to make this video, um, but that video that I would have uploaded uh, will be uploaded probably over the weekend sometime. Yeah, so thanks for watching, and I will see you over the weekend for a new video. Thanks, and goodbye.